Good morning. Welcome to Member Focus Monday. I'm Christina Schaefer, Social Media Manager for HAR. Um, in just a moment, I'm going to introduce today's uh, guest who we are excited to have. But I do want to just let everyone know when we planned this segment, we thought the pandemic was going to be the worst thing going on in the world. Obviously, the events of the past week have affected us all and should not be ignored. Uh, with that in mind, we are working on a panel discussion for next week to dive into this a little bit deeper. Um, but for now, uh, I will go ahead and introduce today's guest, uh, Jeremy Conaway, who is no stranger to the show. You've been on here many times, but welcome, Jeremy. Good morning from the shores of beautiful Runny Lake in northern Michigan. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I believe this is maybe your fourth or fifth appearance on this program, but we do have some new viewers. So if you wouldn't mind just giving us a quick introduction, uh, who you are and, and what you do. Well, I'm Jeremy Conaway, mm -hmm. and for the last many years, I've been proud to be the uh, strategic architect for the Houston Association of Realtors. I also work with a number of other leading real estate associations and brokerages and companies across the country. And essentially, my job is to help the to help the industry move into its next space. And over the last number of years, every time we turn around, there's a new space, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about this morning. And the theme of this morning, by the way. Uh, is all about opportunity, as it always is in our industry. Very good. And before we um, get into this discussion with you, we have a lot to talk about. Um, and the pandemic, what is the pandemic and its effect on the real estate consumer? I do want to mention um, this Bridgeland above my head is is no <laughs> is not an accident. Today's uh, session is sponsored by Howard Hughes Company. We actually have a really nice video from them we will be looking at towards the end of the program so be sure to stay on and stay tuned for that um, so jeremy one of the reasons we love having you on this program is that you because you work like you said with with other organizations with all around the country you really have this hundred thousand foot view that a lot of us can't really see so with with that in mind what is your overall view of the current industry and the current marketplace environment well i think what we're, we're struggling with right now christina is that every time we turn around there's something different and we're, we're trying to figure out why is that where did it come from and frankly we're spending way too much time trying to blame somebody about what's happening with it but if, if we could show you, could you show that one slide? Is that available? Mm -hmm. So this is, for those of you who are old enough to remember uh, back in the, in, the, in the 90s, there was this terrific storm which occurred off the Atlantic coast, off New England, and it later gave rise to a movie called The Perfect Storm. And the essence of that storm is demonstrated in, the, in this uh, graphic. And what we have is a number of trends, forces, disruptions that have been moving across the landscape of our industry for the last several years and most of them reached a hiatus their high point if you will at the end of, of 2019 and so as we entered into 2019 whether there was a pandemic or not you were going to see a tremendous amount of change within the industry now it just so happens that third month in we added to all of that thing all of those things which were already occurring we then added the pandemic, which, as we'll talk about in a little while, has its own set of impacts. And so, uh, if you're if you're looking at uh, uh, if, if you're looking at some of those things, well, what were some of those? I mean, to go over some of the the things. So, some of the changes that were already with us last December. Uh, think about that in, in 2019, over 13 billion dollars of venture capital was invested in, inf in industry infrastructure. I mean, think about that for a moment. Now, of course, every day we're hearing about trillion dollars today, but back in December, a billion dollars was still a lot of money, as Bob Gold would say. So the, the fact of the matter was, that money is now working its way through the industry and is causing a tremendous amount of changes. The second thing you have to recall is that last year, the industry spent $12.5 billion in developing new technology which means that you can say, well, who, who asked for that technology? I don't know anybody who asked for it, but a whole bunch of people thought it was important and began to invest in it. So think about what $12.5 billion buys, and what you're seeing is it's slowly working through the industry's blood system, if you will, or, or body, and it's popping out. And everybody's going, why is that here? Why is that? Because it's being funded by, that, by those kinds of money. Um, 
by the end of last year, it was clear that the American real estate consumer was less than pleased with the traditional service pro the proposal, the value proposition, the agent's value proposition. And we began to see uh, efforts to, to, to change that value proposition. And as part of that, uh, we saw three or four major brokerages appear during 2019, each one of which was offering a, a remarkably different business model. Now, some of them have been around for a long time, but they made their big leap. And when you look at the leading brokerages today, interestingly enough, of the top uh, top 10, four or five of those are companies that made their emergence and their new business plan back in 2019. Mm -hmm. So they were they were on board to make all sorts of, of impact. Um, in our own in our own traditional brokerage sector, we've been seeing declining profitability for the last several years. And that is obviously has not been helped by the pandemic. And then, then lastly, there's been a leadership crisis. Those those of us who live in Houston are, have grown used to the fact that we have simply the finest leadership environment anywhere in the country. And all the things that your association is doing is are tremendous. But you go to other communities around the country, and they've done nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and so all of those things we're going to impact the industry no matter what and are still impacting the industry no matter what. So I guess that leads me into the next question was if the coronavirus pandemic has stopped or changed this shift in the industry. Okay, so this is this is a difficult issue. So one of one of my functions is that I maintain several uh, spheres of influence if you will or contact bases and one of the ones that I I'm in, is in the, is in the medical community. So I happen to have the pleasure of working closely with the team that's managing uh, the pandemic response of the Veterans Administration. So I've, I've had some really interesting opportunities to attend vir virtual conferences and to read articles that I had to read four times because I'm a public school graduate. Um, <laughs> what we need to understand about the pandemic is the pandemic is not a political or an economic uh, or a philosophical experience. It's, 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 it's a set stage that we've gone through several times in the last uh, 50 or 60 years, or 100 years probably. And, that, and are you gonna show the, mm -hmm. the, okay. All right, so this graphic that you're looking at now is simply the, the, the graphic of what a pandemic looks like. And each one is a little different, but the, the important element here is that there's a certain number of circumstances that have to happen to get through this. So we started tracking this all the way back on the left, if you look at that red line, back when we were in the, the pre-disaster phase and we were listening to what was happening in China, thinking, well, what does that have to do with us? No big deal. And then finally, by early, by late February, it was gonna have something to do with us. And then we went through the heroic phase. And in the heroic phase, we're all, you know, people are out fighting the disease and doing all those things. And we're celebrating the heroes that are the first responders. And, and that, that's the next phase, and we went through that phase. And then recently, we've been going through the honeymoon phase. Now, the honeymoon phase reached its, its crazy maximum on, on Memorial Day weekend. And essentially, Americans said, oh, this is, this is fine. We made it. We're alive. Things are going to go well. Let's go to the beach. Let's go to all the amusement parks. And, and then what happens after that, now this is always going to happen, was we enter the disillusion phase. Now the disillusion phase is centered on the fact disillusionment is a sense, is built around a sense of loss. Everyone who's watching this program has lost something. It, in some cases it's a loved one, in some cases it might be a job, it might be economic security, but in some cases it just may be waking up in the morning with an uncertainty in your heart and that and there are uncertainty in your mind and that's a loss that you didn't have before and so everyone's going to respond <clears throat> everyone's going to respond to a loss and that that's what we're dealing with now is this understanding of how people are responding to um, <clears throat> to losses and and so that's so now we're in the process of this disillusionment phase <clears throat> and, and to a great extent what you started the program by talking about is is a um, is 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 a, a part of that, and we're going to argue about that as a culture whether that's that was something that ha happened 100 years ago, or is that the result 
of something that's happened over the past 12 weeks. It doesn't really matter. The fact is, we're well into this disillusionment phase. Now, as you look down this list, what you'll see is, what will these are all the things that drive disillusionment, but the bottom line is, it's grief. And as we all learned in college when we suffered through Psych 1, uh, there are five stages of grief, you know, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And, 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 and we're going to go through those now. And, and we, as, as realtors, as people involved in the real estate industry, and as consumers, uh, understanding the, the issues of, of, uh, of grief and those five stages and understanding where the people that you're working with are in that will become critical. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. Just taking a look at some of the comments I'm seeing from our members. Um, a lot of them are saying that business is great. Business has picked up over the last few weeks, so that's that's encouraging to hear. Um, so you've kind of already gotten into the disillusionment phase um, and, and what that is for us generally. How do you think that will impact specifically the real estate industry and the real estate marketplace? Okay, well, Let's start. Let's start with our own family, mm -hmm. uh, our, our our realtor family, and and again, realtors are trained from day one to be very positive, and, and every day is a good day, and the, and opportunities are everywhere, and that still is the, the the issue. But you, there are members of the realtor community who are going to be much more impacted by uh, the pandemic than others, and that's going to affect how they work, their attitude, how they respond to things. So the first thing is when, when you're in the, in the marketplace dealing with folks, you want to be, especially with other realtors, be sensitive that you don't know which of them has had a death in the family mm -hmm. or which of them has had another experience, but, 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 but start out those interactions with a little probing to be sure that you're being sensitive to that. Um, and then, then you, at some point, go into the whole consumer community. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of stuff going on, and so chances are, the people that, that you're going to be dealing with as consumers and customers are going to have had some reference point to this. And you really need to figure out what that is before you start moving into a pre-designed sales process. If you don't know where they are, then you're in trouble because the chances of your pushing the wrong philosophy are, are very high. Mm -hmm. so, you know, take the time to figure out where your customers are. Uh, and, and your and your consumers you're working. Where are they in this pandemic thing? How has it impacted them? Yeah, that's great. That's really great advice. I see. Actually, one of our members said great advice. Do you think this? You've already discussed shifts and changes were happening prior to this pandemic. Do you think that we would have reached this disillusionment phase regardless of the pandemic, or do you think this was something that is just because of the coronavirus pandemic taking place? Well, again, when we recognize that a pandemic is an emotional experience, mm -hmm. not a financial or a political or a philosophical one, we if, if it hadn't been for the pandemic, once these, uh, again, we have two groups of folks we're going to deal with. We're going to have the folks who embrace change and who learn the new knowledge, who learn the new technologies, and, and who jump out of this saying, hey, I can do this. And then we're going to have the group that decides not to do that. So the group, the group that takes advantage of the opportunity, will charge ahead and will in fact do well in this new world. Mm -hmm. The other group will have a sense of loss because each sale will be more and more difficult. Each consumer will represent a greater challenge, and there'll be some. Well, you know, this always worked before. Why doesn't it work anymore? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to know about these new technologies? And why do people want things like? Like automated, automated uh, uh, evaluations and appraisals, and and why do they want you know why do they want an automated transaction, um, you know? So that's the the answer to your question depends on what group you find yourself in. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I know you have some suggestions for our members that we're going to be getting into in just a little bit. Um, I do see they already have a few questions rolling in for you. Uh, Cameron asked, how many of these changes will stick around? things like door knocking or client appreciation events, things that we have, you know, were standards in the industry in the past, uh, do you think they will stick around going forward? Okay, well, of course, that's the million dollar question. Mm -hmm. When we're done, what will be the components of the new formula for success? So, 
you know, just my sense is, as someone who researches this every day, um, I, I would start with 50%. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that 50% of, of our best practices a year ago will not be best practices moving forward. Now, obviously, it could swing back and forth, and depending on where you are on that success race, that will also change. But, but these are significant changes. What, what the pandemic has done, we were already on a course of change and we were moving at 45 miles an hour. The pandemic has now moved us up to 50 miles an hour and it's just the same things are gonna happen, they're just gonna happen faster. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you, um, so I guess you've kind of already said this, but my next question for you is, do you believe consumers want to see change in the real estate industry? Yeah, you know, all of our best friends are, are realtors and it's always a difficult conversation. But the fact is that that the model that many of our folks are using in their value proposition was designed twenty five years ago. And since then we've gone through you know, we've gone through the Xer generation, we've gone through the millennial generation, we're now headed into the Z generation. Mm -hmm. The fact is the consumers have changed significantly and so have all the other factors. So I think that that uh, that yeah, I think that, that there's going to be a demand there. And again, we just can't, we have to change with it. I mean, that, that's one of the wonderful things that's going on at the association is that, is that everyone is moving forward to be able to help members in this new environment and are discovering that there's a lot of things about this new environment that are actually better, mm -hmm. easier, less hassle for our members. Great. So. I want to get into it because I know you have some suggestions. Um, what immediate steps should our members be taking right now to, to ensure success as we move forward? Um, and as we go through this, if you have questions for Jeremy, type them in and, and we will get to them because I, I know he's going he's gonna to challenge you guys a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Christine is saying, now Jeremy, be nice. <laughs> well, that's why we keep inviting you back so that you yeah, challenge us. <laughs> Well, the first one is you, you got to you got to make a decision. You can either decide to drag your feet and wait for the old what they call the old normal, which is a term hopefully we'll get rid of. But you can either wait for that, and my suggestion is it, it'll never wake you up. You'll you'll simply you'll just simply drift off because it, it, the power behind it is too much. So, so understanding that it's an opportunity, and because it's an opportunity, it's going to require energy. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, even if you're the most spectacular person who ever walked this earth, you're not going to make it through this on your own. You're going to need to have a learning group. You're going to need to have people that you can talk with. Because every time you turn around, just when you think you, there's going to be another kind of a subtle change. And if you miss the subtle changes, then you miss the opportunity. Early adopters always win in this kind of environment. So the first thing is don't try to make it through your own. Mm -hmm. Secondly, and this is difficult, especially if, like some of us, not you, of course, are, are on the other side of that great 50th birthday. <laughs> uh, you know, what we really do, there's a natural propensity at age 55 to want to reach up on the dashboard and put on automatic pilot and say, well, I'm just going to keep doing what I've always done and it's going to work just fine. Right. Not going to happen in this environment. Please understand that your traditional set of skills and competences is not going to get you through the storm. Billions upon billions of dollars are being chain, are being invested and spent to change the basic real estate experience for the American consumer. And you need to understand where that's coming from and decide which of these, you don't have to adopt all new changes, but you're going to have to change your value proposition. And so that's something you need to do that. Okay. You need to have a group in your life, to holler when you get tired of this stuff, but you need to have a group in your life that shares responsibility for understanding what's happening. We call it a learning group. It can be all sorts of different things, but you need to have, you need to, you need to spend at least four hours a week just talking about what are the changes and how you're going to respond to them. Uh, that's not that much time, but you need, you, you need to do this generally with a group of people who are all like-minded. They all have to be opportunists. Don't surround yourself with those with the negative Nellies. They will drag you down and you'll never make it out of the gate. So find an opportunist group and sit down. And, and, and again, 
one of the things that, that, that the association is doing so magnificently is Bob Hale, you know, most people get their information like six down. You know, it goes from one down, and then by the time they get their information, it's out of date, it's old. You know, I'm telling you, that Bob spends his day interacting with the top people in this industry. And all day long, he takes that information and he sends it down to all of us that, that are on the HR team. And, and, and then we're, our job is to try to get that out. Understand that that is an amazing, we, we, we have information that other people won't have for five or six weeks. Take advantage of that. It, it's one of the amazing things. And the fact that Bob has all these relationships that he's spent years building, and these folks call him up and they share with him. And it, that's, pretty, that's a really neat thing. Okay, you got to have a plan. Uh, I know that, that, that realtors love spontaneity. Every transaction is different and every opportunity has to be <laughs> seized at the moment, but you really got to have a plan. And this learning group, what it should be doing with you is to help you design a plan as you move forward. Um, celebrate and, and engage with emerging knowledge. There's, a, there's a, a, a nice woman in the HR organization known as Rita. And Rita has done an absolutely astounding job of converting this tsunami of emerging data into manage manageable bytes, and then on top of that, turning them into into virtual bytes. And you know, you can get more classes right now on and not on subjects, by the way, that didn't even exist 90 days ago. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to travel all over the country. Uh, Rita gets up every morning, and that is her challenge. And so she's she's doing some stuff. Now let's talk about technology again. Uh, you know, if you if you don't know it, the HAR technology team is amazing. Taki Risby isn't just Taki Risby. He has a team from three different continents that are working on this every night. So when when Taki tells you, gee, you might want to try this tool, it's not because he's trying to sell you the tool. <laughs> You've already bought it. What he's saying to you is that we're on top of this thing. And we think this is where you need to be, and 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 other people aren't going to get that. If you're part of a franchise, it may take six or eight months to work its way through. At mm -hmm. HR, it's not so. Understand that, you know, I'm in that age group. I'm not. I technology is not always my friend. But then I have a red, I have a red uh, Mac computer too. So, but, <laughs> but but you're going to have to come up a little faster on the technology. But understand that the technology is not a conspiracy, especially the technology that comes out of us. Um, so it is the next thing. Just a couple more. Yeah, the sure. I did want to mention though, Jeremy, and I know you had we discussed this offline. Um, one of the most recent virtual events that we had last week with Dr. Kleinberg. Um, I know you watched that and you enjoyed it. For any of our members who didn't watch it, uh, give us maybe 10 seconds of why they should go watch that. <laughs> well, first of all, lesson one. You don't have to learn about this from Jeremy Conaway. Yeah. <laughs> go to HR.com and the dang thing was it's videoed. It's there. Mm -hmm. You can watch it. It's, it's a 25 minute, but it's an amazing <laughs> tour of your city. You may have lived here all of your life, and you will never know as much as that guy knows about it. And he's talking about, here are all the things we're going to be worrying about. He talks about the demographics. He talks about flooding. He talks about traffic. And he talks about what's happening. So one, you should know this just because of who you ought to be with your, but you also should know it because your clients, your customers won't know these things. Listen to that thing. Spend 25 minutes, and it will Im immediately impact your value proposition. But, but he was amazing. Excellent. It was, it, Excellent. Yeah. And we put the link to that uh, in the comments for anybody that missed it. Don't go there just yet because Jeremy still has more to share with us. Oh, uh, yeah. but, but maybe go watch it after we're done. Uh, and Jeremy, really quick before you get into the, the other things that you have suggested for our members, I want to remind everyone that today's session is sponsored by the Howard Hughes Corporation. Um, now more than ever, access to outdoors is vital for our health and wellness. Um, you can find out more about this uh, online by checking out their three Houston area communities, Bridgeland, the Woodland Hills, and the Woodlands. And I do want to encourage you all to stay tuned to the end because we do have a nice little video that they shared with us um, for, you, for you all to see. So, um, Jeremy, take it away. I know you had some more things here for us. Hey, just, just a couple more. Now, for all of you who had the privilege of going to college, um, you'll all recall that we talked about the, the stages of grief. 
And you can, why do I care about this? Oh, somebody might die in my family. Well, mm -hmm. actually, grief isn't just about the loss of life. It's the, uh, any major loss. So go out, on, go out on the Internet and track down the stages of grief and just, again, spend not, not a day, spend 30 minutes reading it and rediscover what this is so that when you interact with people, you can begin to understand. Because for each of these stages, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, there is a unique sales, sales pitch or a unique style that applies to that. So if you're, trying to, if you're trying to apply a bargaining approach to somebody who's angry, you're going to be wildly unsuccessful. If, on the other hand, you hook your process up to where they are, it's going to suddenly go, whoa, that's why you need to move. Because it, it's a you need to have a new thing for all one of those reasons. So that's that's an important thing. So understanding where people are is going to be critical. Uh, now this is a little more radical, but all right. So seriously consider the benefits of social damming. Uh, you know, every American is going through an every, everybody from the top to the bottom is going through an experience that they've never gone. Mm -hmm. And you have to start by saying everyone's doing the best job they can. Nobody, there's no book. You can look through your your glove compartment. There's no manual on getting through a pandemic or these other or these other experiences. So you got to start by giving people credit that people are doing the best job they can. Mm -hmm. And going out of your way to damn what they're doing isn't going to sell any houses, and it's not going to gain you any favorites. But being a more understanding and, and, and tolerant professional probably will do will probably do a lot of good in, in, in trying to do that. Uh, so stay away from social damning. Uh, you know, work it out at your bridge club or on a golf course. <laughs> so, so finally, again, and, and, and if this sounds like a sales pitch, it is because I I I get to, I have a, a, an amazing position in the ATR family, and from that position I get to watch what they're doing and I can't tell you enough that much of your solution much of the answers to where you need to go you're going to find through HAR whether it's whether it's the new video work that Claudia is doing or the new technology that Key's doing or the new educational pieces um, that Reed is doing or, or the new equipment purchases you might want to make through the super center and Dennis uh, or, or, the, or the messages that you ought to receive that are, that are being generated by Matt or, or whatever, or looking what's happening with Roz, who's out there asking people every week. So she is generating all this information, and every bit of it is designed to help our members be more effective. And it, it's just amazing sometimes to watch the people have never, you know, have never, have never looked at any of this stuff. Now's the time. You have invested in an amazing organization. And it, it, it is the Harvard University of Real Estate right now. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's the UT. I forgot this. This is Texas, yeah. Or yeah, or yeah, that's AM that's or U of H or any of the others, but yes. <laughs> Very good. Well, Jeremy, I'm I'm seeing a lot of people thanking you for this information. Um, they're thanking us for the trainings and tools and things that we're putting out. Um, even maybe we might have a potential mastermind group forming in the comments. I see Dan King said he's looking to surround himself with uh, people that are watching this, that are you know obviously paying attention. Let's connect. So um, the time to have mm -hmm. the best gang around. It's called a learning group. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Um, so I do want to before we let you go, and I'm sure we might get some questions here in a second. I do want to go ahead and show um, the video that we have from today's sponsor, the Howard Hughes Corporation. So let's take a look at this, and we'll be right back with Jeremy. Now more than ever, access to the outdoors is vital for our health and wellness. Find this and more at the Howard Hughes Corporation's three Houston area communities. Bridgeland, the Woodlands Hills, and the Woodlands. The number one selling community in Texas, Bridgeland connects people to nature in countless ways. Here, new memories are made alongside tranquil lakes, and sanctuary is found on one of the many hike and bike trails. Families and friends enjoy kayaking, bird watching, trail exploring, and more right in their neighborhood. In the Woodlands Hills, neighbors enjoy afternoon hikes on one of our trails, exploring acres of open space and making new friends at our neighborhood parks. Find the best that nature has to offer just 13 miles north of the Woodlands. 
All of our communities are built for moments where being outdoors with nature is more important than ever. That's why we're proud to be standing strong together. Okay, so thank you again to the Howard Hughes Corporation for sponsoring today's uh, Member Focus Monday and this week's HAR On The Move podcast. Jeremy, you have shared so many great suggestions with our members today. Is there any last thoughts, final things that you want to share with our members? Yeah, you know, in the midst of what we're seeing on the news every morning, in the midst of what we're feeling in our hearts during the day, and, and, and the nightmares that we have as we go to bed, it's hard to, to recognize. That, that five years from now, when we look back at this, what we will find is that it was the great re reawakening of this industry. It was the great opportunity of this industry. So somehow get on the opportunity band, recognize the resources you have, and it's going to be just fine. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for sharing that. And obviously, as you mentioned, and we alluded to um, a few times in today's program, there is you know, needless to say, a lot going on in the world. We are working on a panel discussion for next week um, to dive into this a little bit deeper, um, how it's affected all of us, but also specifically the real estate industry. So be on the lookout for that. We'll be promoting that um, starting a little bit later this week. Um, so Jeremy, thank you again for joining us. Uh, we always enjoy having you on. People are thanking you in the comments. They're trying to put together mastermind groups and it sounds like they are taking your suggestions to heart. So this is this has been wonderful for our members. Thank you again. Thank you so much. All right, for all of you, again, we'll see you next Monday at 9 a.m. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.